Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News and a very important episode of that because we have finally, after a year and a half of delegations going out there, we finally have the case of the CSGO Lotto scam and scandal coming to a close and coming to a settlement. So hope you guys all enjoy. A lot of you guys actually first viewed my video about this over a year and a half ago and that case has finally come to a close but in very anticlimactic fashion. So kind of unfortunate news for all of you guys out there who wanted punishment for these two characters. We have Trevor Martin, otherwise known as T. Martin, as well as Tom Cassell, otherwise known as Syndicate, two very popular YouTubers and streamers out there. And and combined, they actually had 85% ownership, so 42.5% ownership each of the website known as CSGO Lotto. They continuously played on this website, and many allegations arose over the last year and a half about these two scamming the community, the main thing being they did not disclose their partnership and their sponsorship, and most importantly, their ownership of this website as they continued to play on it on live stream, on video, and also win many of the pots they actually went in on. Of course, as many people thought it was very sketchy, the fact these guys owned the website and were also winning major pots on it. Of course, this led to allegations out there they were scamming fans, they were scamming viewers. None of that stuff was actually fully proven and that's the problem here as the case did come to a settlement and of course we did have unfortunately enough the settlement come to this and this is the only punishment they received. In the future they must disclose all sponsorships. That was it. That was their actual punishment. Now there were rumors out there apparently there will be fines in the future if they don't disclose future sponsorships. Fines including it could be up to $40,000 per day but as of right now this point in time we're going to look further into it. It seems there was no monetary punishment for these guys who made potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars off their website if not more that number is actually unclarified and not really certified right now we can't really say what that number could range from obviously going to be at least tens of thousands of dollars if not way more than that from owning that CSGO Lotto website for several several months now on top of that we also have them uh, coming out forward and actually saying some other things that did kind of get clarified they were paying sponsors out there YouTube sponsors and Twitch sponsors anywhere from $2,500 up to $55,000 for videos or live streams sponsored by their website that is how much money they were making so although the number they they made was not disclosed, we can assume it's probably in the hundreds of thousands if they're paying people upwards of $50,000 for a video or a live stream sponsored by themselves. And so yes, the case has come to a close, kind of anticlimactic. I know a lot of the minor subjects out there, people involved will not ever be mentioned, that's probably for the best, but of course we do have T. Martin and Syndicate never really posting CSGO videos ever since, probably for obvious reasons there. But on top of that, I feel bad for all the community, all of you guys out there who use CSGO Lotto and then had their bots banned, and those are tens of thousands of dollars of skins that people will never get back because those bots are banned. and those those trades or those skins will never be withdrawn. They'll never be traded back to the players who actually bet them on their website. We're about to bet them on the website. And that's where this whole case kind of gets to me. Of course, I love their content, mostly Syndicate. I think Syndicate still makes really good content. T. Martin, the way he handled the situation was a lot more sketchy. So I think, of course, the way I view him is probably a little bit less than Syndicate. Both what they did was, of course, very, very wrong. But I just feel bad for people out there who obviously will never get their money back. And this, this case came to a settlement and these guys were pretty much not even punished. Even if that $40,000 fine was true, compared to what they made, it just kind of leaves a bitter taste in my mouth of all these scams that have happened in the past. What do you guys think about that? But also moving on on top of that, guys. And that is my man going from a kind of a sad story to a very exciting story. If you guys saw, this guy, actually my friend, Raffle Monster, traded up a $25 trade up. That was Stat Track Blue Titanium. So, of course, trying to get the Stat Track Case Harden 5.7. Your goal there is to get the blue gem there. We've had a few blue gems out there. I'll show you guys a screenshot of one on screen right now. That's actually a $10,000 Stat Track Factory New Case Harden 5.7 blue gem. God, that is a mouthful with a Titan Hollow on it. And of course, my friend Raffle Monster, a very well-known trader out there. I'll link his Twitch channel down below, guys. He went from a $25 trade-up to a skin that's supposedly worth about $7,500. I'll show you guys screenshots and gameplay on screen. That is a stat track, factory new, case hardened blue gem, of course, on the 5.7 there. Amazingly to see, he actually opened it live on stream. And yes, his trade-up initially cost $25 and now allegedly worth right around $7 to $7,500 as well. It's the number one pattern for that stat track, factory new. There's only three of these in the entire world. The first one sold for $10,000 with that sticker on it. Another one sold for about $6,000. This should be in between those two, probably right around $7,000. It's a one in 4,000 chance to open that up. And so I'll show you guys the opening clip right now of when he actually traded up to that weapon. Star Trek 619, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh. It's please, please. <gasps> no. Oh my! That, that, no. no way. See, that is, that is no. a, that is actually no. it. <laughs> And before I get into my last story for today's episode of CSK News and a very important story, thank you guys for all watching. Seriously, leave a comment down below. I got plenty of time today to actually comment back and reply to you guys in the comment section as well. I'll be doing a live stream tonight on YouTube, so look out for that as well. Thank you to my sponsor, Ninja Swap, and thank you to Sparkles. My sponsorship with him only has a few days left, so seriously, I don't thank him enough. If you guys want to go trade your skins, that website is linked down below. But more importantly, I want to talk about a potential new host for our next CSGO major, and it could be E-League coming back. They've actually hosted, uh, if they do get this, this actual bid here, that would mean they hosted 
two of our last three majors. And I want to talk about more of an important point here because what's not really known out there is the current bidding process for these majors. It can be assumed it's probably a pretty straightforward bid process. These organizers probably submit their bids to Valve, and Valve is probably incentivized to take the highest bid, but they probably don't have to always take the highest bid, and they might be incentivized somewhere else to take someone else's bid. Now, what I mean by this is we have probably four top organizers right now, E-League being one of them, alongside them, probably ESL, DreamHack, and MLG. Those are probably our top four organizers. I know there's other ones out there like Starladder and ECS, whatever it might be, but our top four are probably DreamHack, E-League, alongside them, ESL, and MLG. So to take into context this, if all four of those people submit bids and we have E-League getting the bid itself, what if, just think about this, what if they're not the highest bid? What if Valve actually chooses E-League for other reasons? And what might that reason be? Yeah, you might have thought about that. We have DreamHack and ESL, all both currently in the past few weeks have actually unbanned match fixers. And Valve is obviously against that ruling what if, just imagine for a moment, we had E-League who didn't submit the highest bid, but they were actually chosen to host a major because they aren't going to unban match fixtures. What if Valve was incentivized for that? Now, I know a lot of you guys might be saying, Jake, even if E-League did unban them, they couldn't play at the major because it's Valve sponsored. Yes, that makes sense. I understand that. But either way, if E-League's not going to allow these players at their own personal events, maybe Valve is going to say as a sort of a thank you, yeah, you can host your next major. Just think about that. Maybe I actually had the E-League post. I'll show you guys multiple times. Why not show it again? E-League might be our next host for the next CSGO major. Just so happens they have been one of the few organizers out there as of right now to not unban match fixtures. I can't help but think that maybe they're in, uh, uh, okay, conspiracy theories are stupid news. I, I'm done sharing that kind of stuff. As always, guys, hope you all enjoyed. Please stay tuned for tomorrow. I have, I've been announcing this in my past few videos that this video would be coming sometime soon. This video will officially come tomorrow, and I can't wait to actually see your guys' response to it. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching. I am completely out of breath right now. So I'm going to go. Hope you guys all enjoyed. Live, love, laugh a lot. All right. <laughs>